Lesson 1.5 Using Formulas in Geometry. In this lesson, we're going to apply formulas for perimeter, area, and circumference. The perimeter, P, of a plane figure is the sum of the side lengths of the figures. We have a side that is 2 units, 6 units, 5, 3. We just add 2 plus 3 plus 5 plus 6. The perimeter is 16 units. And the area, A, of a plane figure is the number of non-overlapping square units of a given size that exactly cover the figure. We have 5 across. We have 2. We do 2 times 5 or 5 times 2. It's 10 square units. Perimeter is the length around the sides of the figure. Okay? Doesn't matter what shape the figure is. An area is the two-dimensional measurement of the amount of squares that can fit inside the figure. So for your notes, that's my little yellow hand, here are the perimeter and area formulas. For a rectangle, we do 2 times the length, because we have a length here and a length here, and 2 times the width. We have a width here and a width here. The perimeter is equal to 2 times the length plus 2 times the width. We can also write it using distributive property, 2 times the length plus width. We do lengths plus width, and we multiply it by 2. The area for inside here is just length times width. For a square, because a square has four sides that are all the same length, we just do perimeter P is equal to 4 times S for side length. The area would be a side length times a side length, so it would be side squared, S squared. For a triangle, the perimeter is the sum of the measure of its sides. It would be A plus B plus C for the perimeter. For the area, we take half of the base. So here we have a base. We take half of whatever this measure is and multiply it to the height. We could also do the base times the height divided by 2, and that would get us the area. So let's try some of these. The base B of a triangle, it could be any side. It could be down here, it could be over here, it could be over here. It could be any side of the triangle. The height, H, is the segment from a vertex that forms a right angle with a line containing the base. So here we have a line containing the base, and here's the vertex, and it forms a right angle. That is the height. So the height may be the side of a triangle. Here we have the base, and from this vertex, it's making a right angle with the line containing the base, so it may be, the height may be in the interior of a triangle. And it may also be at the exterior of a triangle. If we extend this line for B, we can go from this vertex and make a right angle, and that would be the height. So here are some quick examples. To find the perimeter of this rectangle, we do 2 times the length and width. So we're going to do 2 times 5 plus 2 times 2. That's going to be a 10 plus 4. That's 14 inches. It's given in inches. We know our perimeter is in inches. The area is going to be 5 times 2, which is 10 inches squared or square inches. We're measuring it in square units, so our answer is going to be in inches squared or square inches. The definition of a square is a figure that has four congruent sides. So if this is three centimeters, they're all each three centimeters. We can find the perimeter by doing the four sides times the three centimeters. That's 12 centimeters. The area can be found by doing side times side or side squared. We would do three times three or three squared. That's nine centimeters squared. For this triangle, it's a right triangle. And we know that this side is going to be our height. 
We have a base of 4, but first, to find the perimeter, we just add the lengths of the sides and get 12 centimeters. For the area, we're going to do half times the base times the height. And the base times the height is 12. Half times 12 is 6. It's 6 centimeters squared. We can also do the base times the height over 2 as a division problem. 12 divided by 2 is 6. It's 6 centimeters squared. We can find the perimeter and area of a rectangle with a length of 16 centimeters and a width of 4 centimeters by using the formulas. P, perimeter, is equal to 2 times the length plus 2 times the width. And for area, area is equal to length times width. So we know the length is 16. So for perimeter, we're going to do 2 times 16 plus 2 times that 4 width. 2 times 16 is 32. 2 times 4 is 8. We add them together and we get 40 centimeters for the perimeter. For the area, we just multiply the 16 times 4 and get 64 centimeters squared. Very important that you mark it in square units. And the perimeter is expressed in linear units, such as inches or centimeters, and area is expressed in square units, such as square centimeters or centimeters squared. We can find the perimeter and area of a triangle in which side A is 8 units, side B is x plus 1 units, and side C is 4x units. And the height, h, is 6 units, using the formulas for perimeter and area of a triangle. The perimeter, we're just going to add the 8 plus the x plus 1 plus the 4x. We have x plus 4x for our like terms. So that's going to give us a 5x. Then we have an 8 plus a 1. That's a 9. The perimeter is 5x plus 9. And that's as far as we can go with the perimeter. We don't know the value of x, so the perimeter is 5x plus 9. For our area, it's half times base times height. So it's going to be half times the base, x plus 1, times the height, 6. That's going to be half times 6x plus 6. We can distribute this in and get 6x plus 6. That's going to give us a 3x plus 3. Half times 6x is 3x, and half times 6 is 3. We have 3x plus 3. We can also write it as base times height divided by 2, and that would also give us 3x plus 3. In a circle, a diameter is the segment that passes through the center of the circle, through the center point, and whose endpoints are on the circle. A radius r of a circle is a segment whose endpoints are the center of the circle, that center point, and a point on the circle. And the circumference c of a circle is the distance around the circle. So for your notes, this is the circumference and area of a circle formulas. So here we have a circle. We can see the diameter, d, going across through the center point. Circumference, that's the c, is equal to pi times d. It's going to be equal to pi times that diameter. We can also say the circumference c is equal to 2 pi r, 2 times pi times the radius. We have our little radius here, going from the center point to the side of the circle. The area is equal to pi times the radius squared. So it's pi times radius times radius. And notice that the diameter is 2r here, and the radius is half of the diameter. Half of this diameter is the radius. So if you have a problem and it's asking you to solve it using the diameter, and they only gave you the radius, just double it. And that will be the diameter, see? They ask you to solve for a radius, and they gave you the diameter. Divide the diameter in half. The ratio of a circle's circumference to its diameter is the same for all circles. And this ratio is represented by the Greek letter pi. 
And the value of pi is irrational, which means it cannot be expressed as a ratio of two integers. And there are too many digits of pi to do this. So pi is often approximated as 3.14 or the fraction 22 sevenths, but that's an approximation. Occasionally in math, we'll use the letter pi in our answer. This is referred to as solving in terms of pi. So if pi is in your answer, and you're not using 3.14 or 22 sevenths, then you are solving in terms of pi. So to solve in terms of pi, let's say we're trying to find the circumference of this circle. We know the radius is 5 because the diameter is a 10. We can do 2 pi r, so the circumference would be 2 times pi times that radius 5. We can multiply in any order, so we can do 2 times 5, which is 10, and we don't use the 3.14 or the 22 sevenths to solve it. We just put pi here. Now we have solved it in terms of pi. We have the pi symbol in our answer. We can find the circumference and area of a circle using the formulas c for circumference is equal to pi times d for pi times the diameter, or the circumference c is equal to 2 times pi times r for radius. We can find the area as a is equal to pi r squared. So for the circumference, we see that we have a 3 centimeter radius. So remember, the diameter is 2 radii. It would be one here for 3 centimeters and one here for 3 centimeters. So that would be 6 centimeters. So the diameter, d, is 6 centimeters. We do pi times the diameter. That would be approximately 3.14 times 6, which would be approximately 18 and 84 hundredth centimeters. If we're solving to the nearest tenth, we can say 18.8 .8 centimeters. If we use this one, 2 pi r, we just do 2 times pi times that 3 radius, 2 pi r. We get approximately 18 and 84 hundredths, or 18.8, .8 if we're doing to the nearest tenth. For the area, we know the radius is 3 centimeters. We do an approximation of pi as 3.14. We multiply it times the radius squared. And we have a radius of 3, so that's going to give us 3 squared. That's going to give us 9. We do 3.14 times the 9 and get approximately 28.26 centimeter squared, or 28.3 if we're rounding to. So we're not multiplying by all the digits of pi. So it's an approximation. We use the approximation symbol. If our answer contains the symbol pi, we can use an equal sign because that symbol pi represents all the digits of pi. So if we're using 3.14 or the fraction 22 sevenths, we need an approximation symbol. If we're answering in terms of pi, we can use an equal sign. Just make sure as you're substituting the values into the formula that you're using the correct values. You want to plug in the correct numbers when you're putting them into the formula. Our next lesson, 1.6, is midpoint and distance in the coordinate plane. I hope you're doing well. I believe in you. I think you're going to be okay. And I'll see you next time. Bye.